In this video, we are going to look at powers and roots of complex numbers. Suppose Z and W are two complex numbers that have polar forms like this. They would each have their own modulus and their own argument. Then the power rule, or de Moivre's theorem, says that the nth power of Z can be found by raising your modulus to the nth power and multiplying your argument by n. The root or roots of a complex number. Well, the nth roots of a complex number z will satisfy that the nth root of z is w if w to the n is z. And we say w is the nth root of z. For each natural number n, z will have n distinct nth roots, which we'll denote with subscripts that are given by this formula. In this video, we will develop both of these forms. Let's look at the powers of a complex number first, de Moivre's theorem. Given a complex number in polar form, we want to verify that the nth power of z is given by this expression. To do so, let's consider the following powers, starting with z squared. z squared would be a multiplication by itself. It would be z times z. But by the power rule, we remember to multiply two complex numbers. We would multiply their moduli to get r squared and add the argument. Similarly, to calculate z cubed, we could write it as a multiplication of z times z squared. So it would be this complex number times this complex number that we calculated in our last step. And again, by the product rule, we would multiply our two moduli to get the r cubed, and then add our arguments to get the 3 alpha. If you wanted to calculate the fourth power of z, you would probably assume, and you would be correct, that you could raise your modulus to the fourth power and then multiply your argument by four. And in general, the nth power of z can be found by multiplying or by raising your modulus to the nth power and then by multiplying your argument by n. Let's look at an example. Suppose we want to evaluate the expression negative root 3 plus i to the 8th power. Traditionally, to multiply this expression, we would have to foil or multiply negative root 3 plus i times itself 8 times. Thankfully, with de Moivre's theorem, we'll be able to do this with ease. However, you first must rewrite your complex number in polar form. If you don't remember how to do this, please look at one of the last videos where we go through in good detail how to do, how to write a, a, a complex number in polar form. But now that it is, we should be able to calculate the eighth power of z with ease. By de Moivre's theorem, we would raise our modulus to the eighth power, so 2 to the eighth power, times the cosine of 8 times our argument, 2 pi over 3, plus i sine of 8 times 2 pi over 3. Of course, the 8 times 2 pi over 3 right here, this would be a 16 pi over 3, which would be an angle much larger than 2 pi. So let's reduce this down to a coterminal angle that lives on the interval 0 to 2 pi, which would be 4 pi over 3. So that to calculate the 8th power, we'll look at 2 to the 8, which we know is 256, times the cosine of 4 pi over 3, plus i sine 4 pi over 3.
of course this would be 256 times now the cosine of 4 pi over 3 would be a negative 1 half plus i sine of 4 pi over 3 which would be negative root 3 over 2 and if we were to distribute the 256 into the brackets we would get negative 128 minus 128 root 3 as the eighth power of our complex number. Now let's look at the nth roots of a complex number. Suppose you have a complex number z, then the nth root of z would be another complex number w if w to the n were z. To find our nth root of z, w, we suppose z and w have trigonometric forms that look like this. They would each have their own modulus and their own argument. By de Moivre's theorem, we know that w to the n would have to be its modulus raised to the nth power times the cosine of n beta plus i sine of n beta. But we also know that w to the n must be equal to z. This gives us two different expressions for w to the n. By comparing moduli, we see that s to the n would have to equal to r. So that s would have to be the nth root of r. Comparing arguments, we see n beta would have to equal to alpha, or be off by some multiple of 2 pi. Solving for beta, we have beta would equal to alpha over n plus 2 pi k over n. Substituting both of these expressions in for the modulus and the argument of, omega, of w, we have w would have to be given by the nth root of r, cosine of alpha over n plus 2 pi k over n, plus i sine of alpha over n plus 2 pi k over n. And we note that for a different value of k, we would get a different nth root of z. There would be exactly n roots of z that we could find. Let's look at an example. Suppose we wanted to find the fourth roots of negative 16. As a radical, the fourth roots of negative 16 would look like this. We would expect to get complex roots because we're not allowed to take the even root of a negative number. So we'll proceed by rewriting negative 16 as a complex number. It would live at the ordered pair negative 16, 0. A distance away from the origin, the modulus would be positive 16. And our argument would be pi. So that in polar form, or in complex form, I could write negative 16 as 16 cis pi. To find the four fourth roots of negative 16, we'll write a general formula. We'll take the fourth root of our modulus, plus, and we'll take our, our argument and divide it by 4, plus 2 pi k over 4, replacing n with a 4. Of course, the fourth root of negative, or the fourth root of 16 is just 2. And so this gives us a general formula for generating the four fourth roots of negative 16. We'll evaluate this for different choices of k, where k is equal to 0, 1, 2, or 3. And so for 0, 1, 2, or 3, we generate four different 
complex solutions. Simplifying each of these arguments and rewriting it in a standard form, we can evaluate and find the four different complex roots in the rectangular form. Geometrically, we can look at these four solutions in the complex plane. They would live at equally spaced intervals around the complex plane and all have the same modulus. Well, I hope this is helpful and I'll see you guys next time.